All right, good evening, everybody. It's rapture time. Amen. Rapture time. Get ready to get raptured. Passover time. Justification, sanctification, glorification. Passover. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. I'm so thankful the Lord's led us down this path and the way he's done it. Progressive revelation. I would have loved to have been raptured 10 years ago. Amen. And then, you know, seven years ago. And then, you know, three and a half years ago. But God's timing is beautiful and perfect. And we praise God for his timing. Uh, how he's walked us down this la uh, lane and uh, brought more people along. More people are now saved, man. Some of you. Some of you are now believers in the finished work of Jesus Christ when you weren't even a year ago. And we praise God for that. We praise God for his salvation. Amen. And Jesus included all of us. If you're a human being, you're, you qualify for heaven, but your default is hell. And you're going straight to hell until you're not. And that's why we have preachers. And that's why we have the word of God. We're telling you how to change your default. And God wants you to change your default. He wants you in heaven. Jesus Christ came to this earth. His sole purpose was to get you to heaven. Okay? Get you saved. And the only way to do that is to understand that Jesus is God and there's no other God beside him. He's the only begotten of the Father. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. And he said, I am truth. And the truth is this. You're on your way to hell and there was no way out. You couldn't be good enough to get to heaven. So God came here and did the work for us. He left heaven and came here. And he died on the cross for us. He became a human so he could die for all humans. And the Father placed all humanity's sin upon him. And he was judged in our place so we wouldn't have to be. Somebody had to be because God is just. You do the crime, you do the time. And Jesus stepped forward and said, well, they did the crime. How about I do the time? And that was agreed upon. That, that's agreeable. That's what we'll do. And that was all planned before God ever made man. God knew that man, he gave him a free will to choose whatever he'd want, and God knew that he would choose sin. And so before the foundation of the world, Jesus was the lamb who was slain. Amen. And it was the game plan of God before he even said, let there be light to come here and die in our place. And he who knew no sin of his own, he was perfect. He is perfect. He's beautiful in all his ways. And he came here and became our sin for the purpose that you and I might become his righteousness because that's the qualifier to get to heaven. Jesus took out sin, took out the result of sin, which is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And guys, eternal life is only a gift. You can't earn it. You can't pay for it. You can't work for it. You can't come up with good ideas and look at me, God. It's a gift. And it's only a gift. It was designed to be a gift. And it's only to be received as a gift. And we beg you to believe in once saved, always saved. When God gives you this gift, man, he saves you permanently, eternally. And let him do that. Let him save you. And the way to do that is to place your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, God left heaven, became a man, and did this for me. To set me free. And this is the only way I can be set free. And when I believe, God will infuse me with his perfection, his righteousness. And the word in the Bible is called imputed. He will impute unto you his righteousness when you believe. And we encourage you to believe, man. We want you to go to heaven with us because God's about to rapture us. Okay? There are three different occasions coming up where God can rapture us. He's going to rapture us at Passover. And we're going to focus on this very first one of the three because it's we're in it right now, okay? Right now in the United States of America, all the families, Jewish families, are eating the Seder meal, the Passover meal, including the bitter herbs and everything. And they really don't know why they're doing that. They think they do. They think it is one-dimensional and they think it's only about the exit from Egypt when it's really about the exit from Egypt. Part two, the Bible calls this world Egypt filled with sin. And Egypt in the Bible is always a picture of sin, sinfulness, a sinful place. And God wants to save us out of this sinful place. And he did it by going to Calvary. We looked at that Bible code last night. 
you might want to do yourself a favor and look at that Bible code, okay? Over on Sean's page, uh, listen to that video from last night, that sermon from last night, and uh, understand God's love for you. He came here, and the Father had a plan. You got to shed your blood, and he shed his blood, and he was tore up from the floor up, man, and he suffered, suffered, suffered greatly for us, for you. And then finally, after six hours of being on that cross, it was time to die. And he gave up his ghost and he said, Papa, Abba, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and died. Then two fellows had to get him off that cross. They cleaned him up. They wrapped him and spiced him and oiled him and wrapped him and spiced him and oiled him and wrapped him and spiced him and oiled him. And they put him in that tomb, rolled that stone over him. And Jesus had died on that cross. He suffered on that cross. He died on that cross. He was buried. But he was only buried for three days. And up from the grave he arose with resurrection power. And you'll want to look at that Bible code and hear that sermon from last night. Praise God. God loves you. He wants you with us. And this is Passover. This is the season of rapture. We have just found this out. We always knew it was going to be spring slash summer. And two and a half, three years ago, we found out it was going to be Pentecost during the season of Pentecost. Well, that happens to be a 153-day time period. And when you narrow it down to a 50-day time period from the day Jesus rose from the dead. Okay? So we were focused on, on Pentecost, Pentecost, Pentecost. And we counted wrong the first time. And God taught us you're on the wrong calendar. You got to be on my calendar. And we found out that God's calendar is 44 days slower than the Jewish calendar because Satan has got them doing everything fast, everything off of God's timing. And God is the God of time. He created time. And you can't get off of his time, man. And so all the, the whole Jewish nation, the Christian nation is on the wrong time. And God taught us what the right time is through Sean Mitchell, the watchmaker. And God's called the watchmaker, and he refers to Sean as the watchmaker because he's the watch fixer. He fixed the calendar for us. And so now we're on the right calendar. It's a 44-day differential. We love God's correct calendar. Thank you for helping us to learn it. Amen. Amen. And so that's where we find ourselves. Well, this first Passover, Jesus is going to rapture us. That means he's going to his evacuation plan his exit strategy, his protection, his love for us and our eternal rest without ever having to die. Now, there's been Christians, believers in Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection who died for 1,994 years. Okay? Their dead bodies will raise from wherever they are. God knows where every molecule is of the dead. And those dead in Christ are going to raise first, and then they're going to be caught up to heaven. And the spirits that are in heaven are going to join up with their bodies, and their bodies are going to be glorified. Then we, which are alive and remain living, are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. And we have learned here this past week that it's going to be at Passover. And Pentecost is the church age. Pentecost is a harvest. It was always a harvest festival celebrated every year, 50 days after the uh, barley harvest was the wheat harvest. And that's what we're represented in. And God's going to call us up to the barn. He's going to put us away. And there's three major times where there is gathering in the barn. Four. Four major times in the Bible where there's a harvest of humans gathering into the barn. The first barn that was... Um, created for the believers who died was called paradise or Abraham's bosom. And the first 4,000 years of believers who died in Jesus Christ, believers in the Redeemer, believers in the blood, believers in the sacrifice of the innocent lamb, and they walked by faith by sacrificing innocent lambs, proving that we are of Jesus Christ, a lamb who's coming in the future. And so they did that, and their barn where they went was a place called paradise, and God gathered them into the barn. When they died, their souls were gathered into that barn. And then when Jesus rose from the dead, he took that barn, 
called Paradise with all the souls for the first 4,000 years, and he released it to heaven. Now, there's going to be another barn being filled in this rapture that we're about to have. Amen? And we're going to be caught up in this rapture, all the souls, uh, all the bodies, all the bodies from the past 1,994 years since Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. We're all about to be winnowed, caught up to the barn. Boom! And there is that, that wheat gathered into the barn. And then at mid-trib, there's going to be a small remnant of Jews in the next three and a half years after we're caught up into the barn of, of heaven. There's going to be a three and a half year period where Sean has been preaching to these people and the other guy, the 144,000 witnesses, and they're telling them, when you see Obama walk into the temple and just become so blasphemous and declare himself to be God, you run and God will winnow you up and place you into a hiding place, a barn. And they will be a live harvest that God's going to salvage and save in on the earth, in the desert place. Okay? So that's going to happen to them. Then there's going to be a, uh, at the end of days, there's going to be another harvesting that takes place. At the end of the thousand years, and, and that's when, the question is asked, even at the end of the tribulation, the end of the tribulation, let's get there first. Three and a half years after those people are alive and they're caught up in God's hiding place, he's going to salvage them, gather them in the barn, garner them. They're going to be safe in a place of holding, amen, and they're going to be a wonderful, awesome crop of God, a wonderful harvest, a living harvest that never goes to heaven and never dies just yet. They'll die eventually, but not just yet. God will save them. And then at the end of the tribulation, God is going to come along, and that's what Matthew's talking about. Matthew's talking about, they said, oh, man, somebody sowed tear, uh, tares among us. We have a bunch of weeds out here in our field. Should we go up and rip up all the weeds? And the farmer said, no, because you might rip up some of the good plants too. What we'll do when it's harvest time, we'll come along, we'll gather up the tares, the bad weeds, the bad seed, the lost folks who are... Christ haters, the people who have received the mark of the beast, all the people who are going to be going to hell, God's going to wipe them all out and send them to hell. And then the people who were saved and believers and who survived, including the people in hiding and the next three and a half years of people who survived it outside of the hiding place are going to be gathered up into the presence of the great gatherer, the, the great harvester, Jesus Christ. And the only people that'll be left on planet Earth are the good harvest of souls, the wheat harvest. And then a thousand years later, the same thing will happen. God will allow evil to creep in through the next thousand years, and then there's going to be a rebellion, a division, and God's going to wait till the very end, and then he's going to have a burning of the lost. He's going to have a gathering of the tares. They're going to be thrown into hell, and everybody else are going to be the harvest of God for eternity's sake. God's all about the harvest, the harvest, the harvest. And there's three harvest seasons in Leviticus 23 of seven different practice periods. Moeds, dress rehearsals, feast is how it's uh, announced in uh, the King James Bible. Okay, The feast of God, seven feasts of God, and three of those are harvest. Because God wants to point out the importance of the harvest, the harvest, the harvest, the harvest, the harvest. The gathering into the barn, the gathering into the barn, the gathering into the barn, because God loves a harvest. And you make sure you're part of this harvest. You make sure you're saved. You make sure you're a believer. You make sure that God knows it. And you make sure that you know it. And, the only, and you will know it. Based on God's word, you can always trust him. And he said the only way you're going to heaven is by placing your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And right now is where we are in Passover. Remember, we already experienced that on the Gregorian calendar. Okay? Now we're here on the Jewish calendar, and it's their Passover. And God is going to do a teaching to them. We're going to be raptured on a Passover, and this will be a historical record. Talking about the second coming, correct? I don't know what we're talking about, Tyvon. We're still talking about a rapture. Okay, we're talking about a rapture right now. Uh, and God's about to rapture us and he's going to rapture us on Passover. 
And right now, we're supposing it is going to be on the Jewish calendar, the one they're honoring. Because the Bible says our rapture will bring to them great, great jealousy. Because they were the children of God. They were the people of God. That's what they preach to themselves right now. But they hate Jesus Christ. So they followed a different God. They're following Satan and they don't even know it. They follow Kabbalah, which is Babylonian mysticism, Jewish Satanism. And they won't even say the name of Jehovah. They surely won't say Jesus. They hate him. When they hear that name, they spit. So they're on the wrong side. So we're looking at this very Passover. Right now, we're in the middle of Passover. Okay? And starting tomorrow is our rapture window because tomorrow begins on God's calendar, Adar 2. Okay? So it's, we believe it's going to be an Adar rapture, Passover rapture. And Pentecost season begins the day Jesus raises from the dead on the fourth day, which is the 26th of uh, April. 26th of April is Resurrection Day. Now, that's going to be a Friday on our calendar. So then you wait till Saturday, Sunday to begin the 50-day count taking us. I can't believe 8R2 is almost here. Sure enough, man. Sure enough. And our brother Josh keeps us straight on all of that. Aren't you thankful? So that's right where we are. We are in. We will be in Adar 2, and that's the month of Purim. That's the month of the salvation of the Jews, of, we'll say, of God's people. Okay, And right now, God's people are only believers in the finished work of Jesus Christ to the Jew first and then also to the Gentile, but it's mainly the Gentiles. The Jews have, in part, in fullness, have rejected Jesus, but they'll... Start to believe in him very, very soon, man. Praise God. Because God's going to send back from heaven Sean Mitchell and the other guy in glorified bodies. And we've got to look at today's Bible code to check that out. Okay? So we're looking at rapture right now. And really big by Friday, because that's resurrection day. Um, I don't have any Bible code saying God's going to resur- you know, he's going to rapture us on resurrection day of Passover on the Jewish calendar. I don't have that. But I do know that he's going to rapture us on Passover. And that's an eight-day event starting with day number 2. Okay? Aren't you also relieved that Jesus will rapture all the innocent children? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All the children are going. All the children are going. God's going to rapture all the babies up to who knows how old, 11, 12, something like that. And it's coming right here. And you've caught the time. You've caught the time. So uh, just, just for a note before we look at the Bible code, right now is Passover. It's a wrong Passover on the wrong calendar, 44 days too fast. Then God provides a second Passover. We see that in the Bible with Moses. He's the one who initiated it. Because some of the people didn't get to appreciate and celebrate the first Passover because of situations that, that arrived. So God provides a second Passover, which is exactly a month later. Passover begins on the 14th day of the first month. Really, the 15th day. See, the 14th day is Jesus' day. That's when he died. And then unleavened bread is for all of us to celebrate from the 15th day of the first month to the 21st, right? See, the uh, 14th. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, eight days. It's an eight-day event, one plus seven. And we believe the rapture portion for us is in the seven, the unleavened bread part, okay? So we've got right now, Friday is the day Jesus rose from the dead. And then a month from now, the uh, second month, the 14th day of the month, It'll still be wrong. It's still it's still not on God's calendar, but it is on the Jewish calendar. And we have high hopes and a high understanding that God may utilize the Jewish calendar to bring them to jealousy. And then when Sean comes back, he'll teach him the right calendar, 44-day differential. Okay? And the real Passover, guys, begins on June 5th. June 5th is actually the real time on God's calendar that Jesus died on the cross. And then the 6th, Following through the 12th is all of Unleavened Bread Week. And then the 13th, guys, we believe, unless God throws something in there that we didn't know about, the 13th of June is the day that the we believe the tribulation must start. Okay? And you count uh, 2,520 days forward, 
That'll take you to May 7th of 2031, which is the last day on God's calendar of 2030, okay? Which will be 2,000 years from when he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, died, buried, resurrected in AD uh, 30. And so this will be the 2,000 years later, two days. And then on the third day, it will the, the millennium will start. So the second the day they passed over Jordan, so is the second the day they pass over Jordan. Uh, they may have passed over on the first day, I believe. I don't. That, does it say the 14th day of the first month? Or does it say the 15th day of the first month? I can't remember right now. And Alicia says June is Pride Month. It's going to be a humbling month. It's going to be a humbling month for everybody who's left behind. Sure is. Okay? So quickly, we'll go over that. The first uh, Passover is right now. We're in the middle of it. This is day one. And then tomorrow we'll begin our rapture window because it'll be Adar, number two, the, the, the 13th month on God's calendar of 12 months. They just had to add an extra month this year to the calendar. It's a beautiful thing, what we got going on here. Then in one month from today, which is the 14th day of the second month on the Jewish calendar, IR, is going to be uh, Passover number two. So that's going to be our second one. If the Lord doesn't rapture us right now during this Passover, he's going to rapture us during Passover 2. And if that's not it, he'll rapture us during Passover on his calendar, which begins June 5th. But he's going to rapture us on Passover. And we really believe it could be this one. So pay attention, look up, be excited. All right? All right. Why don't we look at this brand new code that Sean has put up today, man? Today. I love it. Let's look at it. This is from seven hours ago. He put this thing up seven hours ago. And uh, Heather's putting the link up here. So you can have it. Just click on that link and uh, go from there. There it is. All right. Here's what it says. We're going we're gonna to read Sean's commentary here. Just a little commentary at the front. 144 is the ELS, which means the skips. That when you see those red letters on this square box going up this way, each of those are uh, 144 characters in the Bible from each other. It's a short text, okay? This is the very first one found in the Bible. At 144 skip in the Torah of Sean Mitchell, the code begins at character 83,444. So in the Bible, you go all the way through and count the characters, count the characters, and thank God you and I don't have to hand count them. The computer does it for us. And the computer told him where it starts. The very first letter here begins at character 83,444. Now that's a big number because that's Sean's number. That's the Bible code number. 444, God's assigned that right here. Amen? And so we, we just love God's numbers. And at the end of this, when we go through this Bible code, I'm going to read you Miss Aaron's, uh, her her note, her post on here concerning the numbers. God's blessed her looking at the numbers and counts and understanding that. And she has got up a really great post here. We want to read that. So this begins in Exodus 4.30, chapter 4, verse 30. And it ends in Exodus 7.29. Okay. 430, which is interesting because we're in the fourth month right now and 30 is in our day counts. Pretty cool. What's today's date? The 22nd? 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30 is the next day. And they, they say it runs till the 30th. Praise God. Praise God. So that number's right here in this, consider, considering a Passover. And that kind of, you know, that points to this Passover, not the next one or the following one. It points to this one. And 729 is a big number that we were told to look at. And I think Aaron included that in her uh, writing. So we'll, we'll talk about it there. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell, okay? It says, this is God's word in his dialect at a small skip of only 144 skips. Saying this, oh, look at look at those red letters real quick in that picture. You'll see those red letters going up and down from from top to bottom, bottom to top. 
and this is a regular, uh, it's not negative, right? Let's look, make sure that it's not negative. I think it's 144 straight. Yeah, 144. So that means it comes from the top down to the bottom, okay, at that skip. And here's what it says. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness. The rapture barn that we just described of the Christian age, the Pentecost age, the church age. And here we go. We're going to be gathered into that barn. 1,994 years of those that died will be gathered. And those of us who are alive and remain will be gathered. Why is that so important? Because God's saving us from destruction. The United States will be destroyed by the Russians. Have you seen the news? Did you see that Putin and his gang were rushing to the Kremlin last night at 11 p.m. in the pouring rain, getting ready for events? Did you see Putin get in the camera and say, we've just about had enough, and Dmitry, his war time guy, saying we've had enough and we're, we're, we're about to throw out some nukes, guys? They're saying it. It's plain as day. It signals and signs to us, okay? It's the American government that lies. Okay, they, they're all liars. I mean, they're all over their father, the devil. But the American government lies. Putin looks in the camera and says, we're going to come to nuke you. Uh, that's a truth. We have Bible codes telling us that's what he's going to do. So God's going to save us from that first night of nukes. Let's keep reading here. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness. Heaven's a great place, guys. A place of rest, a place of gentleness, a place where everybody is family, everybody is loved, everybody is valued because we have one, one major mindset, the same mindset, the mind of Jesus Christ. We all realized that he loved us and we believed it. And he showed it to us. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man will lay down his life for his friend, take a bullet for his buddy. And Jesus did that for all of us. And he's waiting for you to believe it. And you too can go to this wonderful barn of gentleness. And Sean is our representative. Sean's going. But something's going to be special about Sean that's not for the rest of us. He and the other guy. Let's keep reading. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard uh, a barn of gentleness and will be inaugurated. If this is going to be something else. God's going to have a ceremony for the two guys. After everybody's up in heaven, he's going to have a ceremony. Call these two guys forward. A blessing. They're, we're all going to be in our glorified bodies, but we're going to remain in heaven. These two guys are going to be sent back to start something new, to, to the inaugural ministry of these two guys. Something has never happened before. They're mentioned in the Old Testament as the two olive trees, and they're mentioned as the two lampstands. They're going to be shining the light of God's glory. Okay? And so there's going to be an inauguration in heaven. There's going to be a ceremony in heaven, a presentation. Guys, these are the two witnesses of the whole earth that has been mentioned in scriptures 2,700 years ago. The book of Revelation, chapter 11. These are those two. And God's going to bring great attention to them because these guys got a great mission. And there's only two of them in the entire world of human beings. That's a big thing. And they're going to be, be inaugurated here. It's from the top. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness and will be inaugurated and sent back in the inaugural ministry. Just two of them. Ascribe amazement. Um, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing that God's going to send two glorified people back. What is glorified? Uh, that's the body he had after his resurrection. He could walk through walls. He can just disappear. He could show up. He could change his look. You, you read the resurrected Jesus. What happened to him? Those 40 days he was walking on this earth. Those things I just said were happening and it will happen with these two guys. Uh, I would ascribe that amazing, wouldn't you? Ascribe amazement. It is imminent. And he shared a note with me. I'm going to go ahead and open up my notebook because I want to get this right. It says, the word imminent comes from the word pregnant. Okay? Meaning, it's about to give birth. It also means uh, incipient. And it's at the initial stage, the beginning stage of something about to develop. Concerning a person, it's developing into a special type or role. Inauguration. 
And this is what this, this word means. It's imminent. It's about to happen. It's childbirthing. And when you read Revelation 12, the birth of the child, this is what we're seeing. The birth of Moses, the birth of Elijah, going from human state to glorified state. And then they're coming back in that state for an inaug inaugural ministry. Praise God. Is that cool or what? All right. Let's start from the top. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard. What we're doing, guys, is looking at the brand new code from seven hours ago. Uh, we have the link up here. Heather's put it up here. It's on Sean's page. It's on my page. And several of you have it on yours as well. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness. Ain't that going to be great to get out of this chaos, to get out of this trouble. And all the babies are going with us. All the young ones are going with us. And everybody who's saved been born again is going with us. Believers. Hallelujah. It's amazing. And we get a sneak peek by faith. That's what the whole word of God is. A sneak peek by faith. We get to see it first before it happens. The key is you got to believe. You better have faith in this. Without faith, you cannot please God. You need to believe his story. You need to believe he's powerful enough to give his Bible in 66 books in the plain text. And inside that, he has unsealed the most amazing thing. Sean has discovered great discoveries, how to make Bible codes that he never knew before, that he never attempted. Our imagination has taken us there, but now he's doing it. He can connect the Torah to the New Testament and find incredible stuff. He can connect the entire Bible to itself from Genesis to Revelation and find code after code after code. One chapter wrapped, two chapters wrapped. It's endless. And that's all from these 66 books. And people mistake it just for, you know, being a book. And therefore, they don't read it. They'd rather watch TV and explosions. <laughs> explosions. <laughs> and totally miss what's going on. What's in this Bible is incredible, man. Uh, Jehovah knew he could trust Sean. That's what the Bible says. That's why he chose him. And he's a descendant of Moses. I mean, come on. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness and will be inaugurated. Ascribe amazement. It is imminent. It is a new role. It's about to be birthed, going from human to glorified, going from Moses' role as a human on this planet to Moses, the glorified one on the Mount of Transfiguration. He hadn't yet been glorified yet, but this one son of his will be. It will strike you. It'll be striking, man. When it comes back to the Jews, it's going to hit them hard, what just happened. And they're going to realize, and many of them will believe quickly. And that's why I believe second Passover will be utilized here. While Sean is teaching the scribes, while Sean is teaching the Levites, they're going to be learning everything, just like Paul did. As soon as Paul was saved, he took all of his Jewish knowledge, he had it memorized, and applied it to Jesus, and boom, that was life-changing. And all of these students of the law, there's tons of them, they're going to be learning quickly, and it's going to strike them in the heart. And so will God's judgment. God's judgment will strike so we see that next year in the Aleph and the Tav. These are my signs and my wonders, says Jesus, in the land of Egypt, the United States. He's calling us Egypt at, at this present time. We are the modern day Egypt with a modern day Pharaoh. And God's about to kill us. He's going to start with us at the rapture, the night of the rapture. And that those eclipses that we just saw formed the A, the Aleph, and two Tavs. Actually three, one at the point and two down here. But the, the Aleph and the Tavs, that was God's sign to us that he's about to destroy us. And he spelled A for ambush. He spelled A for America, you're wiped out. He spelled A for himself, Aleph. I'm the beginning. That's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 of those characters. And God said, I'm the beginning and I'm the end, dude. And I began you in the beginning. God created and I'm about to end you. That's what he's telling us. And he says, these were my signs. And all you people laughing at the signs of God, you're fools, you're stupid, you're retards, man. And my wonders, they're wondrous. They're wonders. And we know they belong to God. And we know that he did all that on day four. And to get all these different orbits, 13-year orbit, 20-year orbit of 80-day orbit, all these orbits of the planets going around. And to have that sun and moon make an eclipse on this very day was a miracle of God, and he got all that initiated 6,000 years ago. And from that first eclipse back there in 2017, August 21, until this last eclipse that we just had was six years 
six months, six weeks, and six days. That's the number of man, and God's about to stomp out man. I am the Aleph, and I'm the Tav. I began you, and I'm about to pluck you up and destroy you. But those of us who are saved and believers, he's going to raise us up and gently place us into his barn, his gathering place of gentleness. And we're going to be glorified and never have another bad day after that. Our eternity just getting started and it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder after that. It will strike you. Aleph Tav are my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt, the USA. The lampstand, that's Sean, is coming to the children of Israel because of me. God loves Israel, his wife, and he's sending these two guys back because of God. They represent him. They are his light. They walk in holiness. They did on this side. They feared God with all their hearts on this side. They loved the Bible on this side. They walked with him. They feared him. They hated sin on this side. And they loved the things of God on this side as human beings. And God loves them. And God's chosen them. And God says, and they're going to be coming back for me. I, they're doing this for me. Represent me. Sean and the other guy represent God at all times, and they're doing this for God because God loves Israel. Now, he doesn't love Zionism. He doesn't love their leaders. He's going to send all them to hell quickly. He's going to destroy them. The Jews in New York City are all going to die and go straight to hell the night we go to heaven. And he's going to start a work, a convicting work, an honest work, a fiery work. And he's sending Sean, the lampstand, and the olive tree with the other guy back here to take care of business, and God says, it's all for me. And I love that. My signs, my wonders in the land of Egypt, the lampstand, Sean, and the other guy, is coming to the children of Israel because of me. He announced that my prophecy of Exodus, now, he's already announced it on this side, Bible code after Bible code, preaching after preaching. He announced that my prophecy, that capital M is God, my prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled for the USA. Now, he's taken us to Exodus. When Moses was delivered from Egypt, all of Israel was delivered. They went out with a high hand. Bye. Praise the Lord. Bye. Praise the Lord. And they got out there to the Red Sea, and then Pharaoh's army chased them down. And he's saying, guys, what's about to happen is an overlay of what happened the first time in Egypt proper in Moses' day. Now comes along second Moses preaching the truth about what's going to happen. The USA is Egypt. God hates Egypt. It is the land of sin. It is the land from which evil and wickedness and idolatry springs forth. Wickedness, fornications. I mean, it's it, wicked sin. The most wicked sin comes from us. And the main thing is the innocent blood of those abortions. And God hates it. And he sent Sean here to preach and warn, USA is Egypt. USA is Egypt. And the day God brings the ocean on top of Egypt is the day the bride of Christ will be saved. He's been preaching that. My prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled for the USA. Yeshua encoded, that's Jesus. Jesus encoded a lamp to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. He gave us the Bible code. The Bible code is from Jesus. It's God's word. You better come to believe that, okay? This unsealed text from within the Bible, a computer, it took a computer program to open this thing up, and now we see it beautifully. And Sean presents it to us. You see the Hebrew characters going there, and then he labels it in English for us. Praise God. Rex says, if Aleph equals 8 and Tav equals 30, uh, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, I know that Aleph equals one, and Tav equals some hundred. I forget what hundred Tav represents, okay? I don't know if it's 800. I, I forget, uh, because it, it counts one through nine, and then the tens, and then the hundreds. That's how we get the Jewish uh, numerology, the numerics from the alpha, okay? From the, from the alphabet. Um, if somebody can bring that up. Put, put that up here, uh, numerical values to the Hebrew characters. So God says, my prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled for the USA, and it's about to be. See, it's a futuristic. It's both, when that, that word imminent is a present tense term, it's imminent. That means it's happening right now, and it will happen for the future as well. Uh, Cush says, Tav is 400. 
Cool. Tav is 400. Thanks, buddy. Yeshua encoded a lamp. That's your wonderful Bible code, guys. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This has been the most wonderful light here at the end of days. God giving us end time truths and specifications, man. And here it is right here in front of us. And he's told us, um, you guys in the United States, you're Egypt. And I'm going to destroy Egypt. And the very night I destroy Egypt with that one mile high wall of water coming in at 600 miles an hour, I'm going to pull you up just before it happens. And I'm going to save you out of that trouble. Just like I did Moses back there in Egypt. Egypt this time is the USA. And Moses this time is Sean Mitchell. That's what he's telling us. And he says, I'm going to have Sean give you that lamp. Over 500 Bible codes, 519 of them, maybe, by the time we're done. 519 of these codes. Boy, that's told us a lot. That's got a lot of our doctrine straightened out. That's kept us from thinking stupid and being dumb. That's kept us thinking like God and knowing the truth. He has shined the light on us. Praise God for that. The lampstand is coming to the children of Israel because of me. He's coming back to you guys. A lot of the Israelites will be destroyed and killed that night because they stayed in Egypt. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. God opened up Israel for you in 1948, and you did not go back. You stayed here in Babylon. You stayed here in Egypt instead. And because you did, death is coming your way. And God's going to send Sean back to comfort all the family members. And say, hey, guys, here, we, we told you on this side, and here's the Bible code. And boom, there's the lamp of God. And God had Sean encode all these words on this side. And here we are leaving a record of my preaching here as well. We've got the written text of the code and the spoken word of these texts. God always has two witnesses, man. Always. On both sides of the rapture. This side and that side. He announced that my prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled in the USA. Yeshua encoded a lamp to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. Rapture. He told us when it was now. That's what code we're looking at. Passover, Passover, Passover. It's going to happen at Passover. Amen. In Gematria, Aleph represents the number one. And when used at the beginning of Hebrew years, it means 1,000. Great note. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav. Yep, yep. You got Aleph. And the Tav. Praise God. And that's what God wrote right across the United States. It's me, guys. This is me doing this. I'm the Aleph and the Tav. I'm the Alpha and Omega. He tells us that in, in the book of Revelation. But in the Aramaic text, he says, I'm the Aleph and the Tav. Not the Alpha and Omega. That's a Greek term. Yeshua encoded a lamp, the Bible code, to bring out the children of of Israel from Egypt. This is where we get all the details about the USA and New York and Babylon and the tsunami and the Russians and Poseidon is the Bible code. That's where we learned all that and it's right there in our face, plain as Hebrew. And then Sean makes it plain as English when he gives us the labels and gives us this writing right here. The Song of Moses, that's the Bible code. God refers to the Bible code as the Song of Moses Mitchell. All 519 of these codes when it's said and done. And he'll probably upload, make the final upload the 25th or the 26th. The 26th of the day Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, that's the feast of first fruits. You got the first day when he died, and then you got when he was buried, and he stayed buried for three days and then rose. The 26th of this month, 426, will be the day Jesus rose. And Sean's hoping to get the final upload 25th, 26th by then. The song of Moses is the signboard of my shepherd. You know how all the movies have all the crazy guys wearing a signboard? The rapture's near, the end of the world. They stole that from God. Because God's prophets have always done that. They've always had a signboard. They've always represented the word of God in warning. And Satan makes fun of it in movies. But this Bible code is God's signboard. Sean is God's signboard. Announcing, announcing the truths. Hear ye, hear ye. He's the, 
the, the Song of Moses, the Bible code, is the signboard of my shepherd. God says, Sean is my shepherd. You know how we say, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he guides us, he guides us, he guides us. We're going to get to heaven, and there's going to be inauguration. There's going to be a ceremony. There's going to be a blessing. There's going to be a shouting and a hallelujah, and we're going to learn the songs from this songbook. And then God, at his appointed time, is going to send Sean and the other guy back. And they're going to be his shepherds because he's going to use them to shepherd the sheep of Israel into truth through the songbook, through the signboard, through the Bible code. And they're going to believe and they're going to follow. One third of Israel will be saved because they followed God's shepherd. Amen? He says he's my shepherd. His code is my secret. God don't have no secrets. Well, the code is his secret, but it's been unsealed for those who will believe it. It, it. it doesn't remain a secret. God's published it. The code, God says it. His code, Sean's code, is my secret, says God, unsealed. They were secrets since the book of Daniel and before. And God told Daniel they'll be unsealed at the time of the end, bud. Go your way. At the time of the end, they'll be able to figure this thing out. And a computer come along in 1976, a computer program, and figured this thing out. Hallelujah. And God says his code, Sean's code, is my secret. Unsealed. No longer a secret. If you'll just open it up, believe it, and, and hear it. Moses, the olive tree of Jehovah. Finally got some rest. Heaven's going to bring rest. Heaven's going to bring healing. If you guys only knew what that guy's gone through in his entire life and the joy that he has in his heart, the humility that he has in his heart, the love that he has in his heart for you, for the Lord, he's finally going to get some rest. And God makes note of that because the guy needs rest. On the seventh day, God rested from his work. Sean's been working for 10 years solid on these Bible codes. And God's finally going to bring him to a wonderful place of rest. Heaven. We're all going to find that place. He's our representative. He's our ambassador. If he gets it, we get it. We get everything except his coming back in glory. We'll be in heaven with glory. Watching the story from the Bible room. Amen. Why did God try to kill Moses in Exodus chapter 4? Because Moses was rebellious. He was dragging his feet. God told him to do something and he didn't. God told him to circumcise his boys, and he, he kind of thought, okay, I will, but, you know, later. And God said, now! When I tell you to do something, you do it! Not the church age, not this modern church age. We don't care what God said. I'm saved by grace. I don't care what his Bible says. Good question, Robert. You better do what God's telling you to do now, guys. You ain't got much time to do it. He's about to rapture us at Passover season. Do you believe that? Exodus 7, 26. 726 is the Greek word harpazo, rapture. And here it is in this code. Very interesting. Exodus, which is rapture in our case, from the United States, Egypt, going to be destroyed. And the rest of the world gets raptured too, guys. No matter where you are. We got beloved friends in South Africa, in England, all around the world, man, India. And we're all going to be raptured at the same time. We're all going to find some rest. Let's see what that says. Exodus 7, 26, note, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. The night of the rapture, we're going to be let go. And we'll never have to deal with Egypt and Pharaoh and all these retards again. The Congress of the United States and whoever your government is where you live, we won't have to deal with them one more nanosecond. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, let's read that code again from the top. Start with Sean's commentary, small commentary. 144, that's the skip in this thing. 144 is the first ELS in the Torah of Sean Mitchell. You bring up Sean Mitchell, the, the whole name. Not just Sean or just Mitchell, but Sean Mitchell. 144 is the smallest and first ELS skip. The code begins at character number 83, 444. That's a wonderful note. In Exodus, 430. We're in month 430, April. Beautiful thing. 
and ends in 729. We've seen that over and over and over. And 729 pointed back to 719. You remember all that? Great stuff, man. Here's the Bible code. God's word in his dialect. Sean Mitchell is coming aboard a barn of gentleness and will be inaugurated. Ascribe amazement. Be amazed, guys. Don't just hear this. You be freaked out, amazed in faith right now. I can't wait. I can't wait. This is all going to happen. It's imminent. It's right here. It's like a pregnancy. It, the baby's about to come forth. The child's about to be delivered. Satan wants to kill us. Satan, guys, Satan is coming to kill us on the night of the rapture. He's coming to destroy us. He's going to surprise attack the East Coast and destroy it. And probably some other areas around the world. But we know that's going to take place. And God's going to save us from his destruction. He's coming to kill us. He's going to save the man-child alive. Just read Revelation 12 in the first several verses. That's what you're going to be seeing here. Okay? It will strike you. It's going to, it's going to surprise and, oh, just freak Israel out. Okay? God's whole focus point is Israel. And it's going to freak them out. You and I are going to be blessed beyond. Aleph Tav are my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt, those eclipses that came through. The lampstand, Sean, is coming to the children of Israel because of me. He's serving the Lord still in his glorified body. He's coming back just like Jesus did. Remember, Jesus came back in his glorified body for 40 days, and he did all that for the Father. He said, I don't do nothing except the Father guides me, and Sean won't be either. He's only going to do the work of the Lord 100% of the time, and that's what he does now. God chooses those guys to do his work. Be one of those. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he's going to come back because of me, God says. He announced that my prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled for the USA. He's announcing it on this side that it will be fulfilled. And when he comes back, he's saying, guys, told you so. It was fulfilled. You were invited and you're still invited. The Lord loves you. Come on, believe, believe, believe. And they'll believe. Yeshua encoded a lamp to bring the children of Israel from Egypt. You and I, have, we, we, got the, we got the skinny. We got the inside scoop. We know exactly how it's going to go down and when now. Passover. So we're looking right now during Passover. It's Passover, folks. Next seven days. We're looking here. This, this is our nearest spot to watch. And we're watching until the end of this thing. And I'm watching to be raptured. Amen? Because, guys, just watch the Russians. Watch their anger. Watch um, Iran. Watch North Korea. Watch the Reds. Okay? And just kind of see their temperature. What's going on with them? And they're at the place where they'd write it to nuke us. And puke us. He announced that my prophecy of Exodus was fulfilled for the USA. He pronounced that it would be. Right now, and when he comes back, he'll pronounce that it was. Yeshua encoded a lamp to bring out the children of, of Israel from Egypt. The song of Moses is the signboard of my shepherd. His code is my secret, unsealed. Moses, the olive tree of Jehovah. Oh, finally got some rest. Amen. Pray for Sean to get rest. Amen. The night of the rapture, he slept. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Hey, why don't we read Miss Aaron's note here because it's pretty cool. All right, let's open that thing up. Boom. She says this. Oh, praise God, I am so smitten. I love his word. The Lord is marvelous in all his ways. God speaks to us everywhere. Like Sean said, the code begins in Exodus 4.30 and ends in Exodus 7.29. 4.30 equals seven. Four, four plus three equals seven. And 729 equals 18. Seven plus two plus nine, which ends up being nine plus nine, right? 18. And then she says seven, 18 is July 18. Those two numbers together make seven and 18. That's Sean's birthday. God's pinpointing this guy all the way around. My signboard, my work, my shepherd. It's Sean Mitchell of you know, Canada, the Canadian fire. That's him. Sean's birthday. Bible numbers 430 is 
uh, wailing in the streets. Number 729 is anointed one is mocked, won't resist. These numbers are important. This 429 slash 30, or 429 30, is the two year anniversary of the Bible Codes unsealed ebook by Moses Mitchell. Because of the leap year that makes 104 weeks and four days, which again is 144. The same as this ELS, 144. No coincidence. 729 is also the date highly marked by God. If we use these numbers as dates, they are. 90 days apart. 90! Amazing. Psalm 90 is the prayer of Moses. Psalm is the, one, uh, is the 19th book of the Bible. Psalm, which is 19, 90 equals 199. Praise God. 19 and 9 is 199. Of the year. That's the... Um, Sean's birthday is 718. It's the 199th day of the year. Again, that's no coincidence. God's pointing to Sean Mitchell. Do not laugh at him. Do not scoff him. Greg Jackson laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. Stupid fool. We're, we're calling you to repent. Why don't you, you, you got time to believe. You got time to repent. You got time to be in sackcloth and ashes and tearful repentance. Do it, man. Do not laugh at Sean Mitchell. And all you people who hear in my voice who've laughed at him and scoffed him, you better get right. God points to him at all these numbers. Miss Aaron is showing us again just some more triangulation of the facts. Again, it's no coincidence. 90. Remember, after Jesus was crucified, the blood stain on his forehead resembled a cursive sade. Now, it was that three. Remember? When you, when you look at the Shroud of Turin, you're going to see that three on God's head, which is a cursive sade. That's a, one of the 22 letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet. Uh, sade equals the number 90. Remember how we were just talking? The values, Aleph equals one and uh, Tav equals 400. Well, Sade equals 90. And here we are again. And guys, Moses wrote one psalm, and it's Psalm 90. Just note that. He wrote five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Psalm 90. And he, God keeps bringing us back to Psalm 90. Why? Because Sean is the great, 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 great grandson of Moses. And it says of his mother, Linda, she was the daughter of Moses. Hallelujah. Is this awesome or what? Uh, that's Sean Mitchell. Remember, after Jesus was crucified, the blood stain on the forehead resembled a cursive sade. Sade equals 90, and it means righteousness. Praise God. And here we are at Passover. God used all the calendars to his glory. God is so beautiful hiding his secret in Exodus. Now it's unhidden, right? Praise God. He's so good, uh, beautiful, hiding his secret in Exodus as we await our Exodus. This code is in only four chapters of Exodus, chapter 4 through 7. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. So, 2, 4, 7. 247 or 742, it equals it when you look at it from God's angle, from right to left and left to right. The Hebrew gematria for bullseye is 742. Hello. The bullseye is New York City. And God's going to nail the bullseye, man. That's his target. Amen? Remember, God just said in the previous code that Babylon is the bullseye. New York, USA. New York City, USA. God's perfect numbers are always perfect. So perfect that this code was posted today on 422-2024, which is a, a palindrome date. That means that it's read backwards and forwards the same. Just remove the zero, man, and you get 422-224, or backwards, 422-224. On this very date, God's numbers, God's amazing. So good. That means that it is read the same way backwards or forwards. The Lord declares the end from the beginning. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I think that's a good way to end tonight. God's codes, his numbers, and you poor fools. 
who roll your eyes at the numbers, who roll your eyes at the ELS, who roll your eyes when we present all these beautiful, beautiful facts of God. Why? Because the numbers don't lie. Jesus can't lie. He's impeccable, without sin, incapable of lying. He said, I'm truth. The numbers never lie. They speak truth. Cush says, Sade is the 18th Hebrew letter and it's pictured at right. The spiritual number 18 means bondage or prison. In Hebrew, the character Sade is used to represent the number 90, just like sister was talking about. The spiritual number 90 means saints sifted. Time of testing. If Jesus Christ was sifted, if he was hurt, if he was beat down, if he suffered, if he went through agony, so will all those who live godly in Christ Jesus. They'll suffer persecution. Great note, dude. And that came from the Bible, Numbers for Life. Amen. So, and Tyvon says, amen. Be expecting an update on the 25th or the 26th. That's what I think. Lindy says, just incredible. Puzzle pieces falling into place. I love it. And so do I. We, we've known, we've known spring, summer, spring, summer, spring, summer, Pentecost, Pentecost. And now God says, let me just go ahead and tell you. Passover. And Jesus' death at Passover is an echo to our salvation physically, our salvation spiritually, our salvation in sanctification, and our salvation in glorification is all because of that holy hill, which looked like a demonic skull. Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there at the place of death, God gave his life for us so we could live and never have to face death. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Guys, I love you. I love you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this wonderful code. Thank you for this wonderful comment. I pray you'll bless Sister Erin. Bless her. Bless her family. Bless her family, Lord. And uh, prepare all their hearts to be ready to see you. Thank you for her excitement and her joy. Thank you for Lindy. Thank you for Brother George. Thank you for everybody who comments and brings us just the wonderful, wonderful word that we would, wouldn't have gotten on our own, that you placed in their hearts. And we're so appreciative of that. Bless Sean. Bless him with rest. Bless him with these last codes that he'd love to complete and upload and get this book updated. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting seeing him in heaven glorified and at rest. It's going to be wonderful seeing, seeing him inaugurated for this new mission as a new man in this glorified body, as God's shepherd, your shepherd, Lord, your shepherd guiding your, your wife back to you. What a privilege, what a blessing. And uh, we just, in faith, rejoice in that. We praise you. We believe. Help anybody who's having issues with belief in your Bible code, in these truths, that you'll get it straight with them, that you'll correct them. You'll get them right 100% with you in your word. Your word never lies. And you are this big. You are this powerful. You are this awesome. And you love numbers. And we love you and your numbers. We praise you. I pray for everybody here listening. Bless mommies and daddies and the kids and grandparents and the grandbabies to uh, just finish well, to finish strong for you. Looking unto you, the author and the finisher, the Aleph and the Tav of our faith. We're looking for our faith to be totally come to an end in completion at the rapture and live from now on by sight only. That's going to be awesome, Lord. And help us in the meantime to live by faith and to just to trust you and to walk. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, guys. If you're not saved, get saved. Please believe. God's coming, man. And he has finally given us the last detail we believe that it's at Passover. Now, he didn't say which of the eight days it would be, but we know that it's probably going to be the last seven one of the last seven, and one real biggie to look to is the day Jesus rose from the dead, which is the 26th. And we'll probably stay up that night. If he hadn't raptured us yet, we can stay up that Friday night. And we might as well do that. Have a watch night. Be looking in for the Lord's Lord to come get us, his rapture. Amen. Finish strong, everyone. Amen. Amen, says Gordy. Amen, hallelujah. Jenny says, amen. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Great code. I love it. I do too. I'm so thankful he shares these with us. Aren't we privileged? He doesn't. These are for the Jews. You and I have the plain text. We have enough to get us saved.
but he shared it with us. And only those with a faith to believe and follow along, the small remnant, the small crowd, the disciples, follow along and love it as Josh does. I praise God for you, Josh. Praise God for Kayla. I praise God for Sky. Y'all, we pray for you. We pray for everybody. Heather, Micah, pray for you all. Miss Evelyn, God bless you. Brent says, I deleted my message, so you have, ooh, I just got this Let's pop up in front of you. Have more time for others. I don't even know what, what that message was, but I don't get to see all the messages that pop up here. I don't get to see them until after the sermon. And I'll be like, what? I never saw that. I'm Like Jonathan the other night announced war happening. That would have been a great note to mention here. And uh, missed it for another hour, almost 56 minutes. Uh, Evelyn says, I'm tired of my life here. I am too. And God is tired of us having to put up with this. The only thing he's waiting on is his appointed time. And now he has shared with us his exact appointed time right now. Passover. If it ain't this one, it'll be second Passover. If it ain't this one, it'll be the real Passover. But I believe we're going to be in heaven for the real one. And we're going to see the Passover lamb as a lamb as he was slain. I believe we'll be in heaven for that. That's where my faith is. Walk with the Lord, man. Walk with the Lord. We're praying for you, Evelyn. We love you, dear. We love you. We're wore out too. And we're ready to have that rest up in that barn of gentleness. Y'all ready for, to be gathered into that barn of gentleness? Get rid of this chaos, this turbulence. Me too. I love you. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Amen.